You're about to meet two ambitious high school students who we've been following for months, drowning in coursework and test prep in the mad dash towards college. But just this week, 85 top schools, including the entire Ivy League, signing on to try to tone down the pressure with potentially game-changing proposals. So what does it mean for kids with big college dreams? It's an early weekend morning, and while most kids are sleeping in, Chris Karpovich is cramming. It's not, I'm not taking a There's just moments to go before he takes the SAT, and tensions are running high. Can you just drop me here. Can you not jump out of the car? Mom, literally, it's fine. I'll go walk. You don't have to. Mom. Bye, Mom. He's been very stressed out, so he has a cold, and it's raining. <laughs> A lot of us go, oh, high school, that was when I had all that fun. That was when I did all those things. I hung out with my friends. Um, he really doesn't have time to do any of that. But while Chris and millions of stressed out students are applying for the class of 2020, hell bent on finding the fabled holy grail of that perfect application, a sea change is underway that threatens to revamp the very system on which admissions are based. In our day and age, young people are too focused on achievement. And we need to send a more balanced set of messages. Richard Weisbord of Harvard and his team publishing a new report this week called Turning the Tide, lambasting a student body obsessed with personal success over the common good, calling for sweeping recommendations to what some see as a broken college admission system. Everybody knows that the system's irrational, that the system's out of whack. Parents are painfully aware of it, too. Do you feel like college admissions just chokes all of the joy out of childhood? Yes. I say, you know, it needs to stop. Something needs to give. I can't. Why not? Because this is what they are looking for. Chris is a senior at Rye High School, just north of New York City. Ambitious students and a rigorous curriculum, making it one of the best public schools in the nation. This is AP Scholar, National Honor Society. This is the Youth and Philanthropy Award. On paper, he checks off the many boxes prestigious universities say they scout for. He has near-perfect grades. He's captain of the cross-country and debate teams and spends countless hours volunteering at Bread of Life, his parents' food pantry, even creating a chapter at his own school. How much sleep do you get a night? Five hours, maybe. He's moody. He doesn't sleep. You see fatigue. You shouldn't see that on a teenager. But you do, on Chris and countless others. Years of sacrifice, huge chunks of his childhood, he says, all in the hopes of getting into his dream school, Harvard, where both his parents went. What happens if you don't get into Harvard? Um, and then I looked, <laughs> my other choice is uh, hopefully it doesn't come to that. But with competition at an all-time high, it very well might. Harvard University is ground zero for this reform movement pushing to turn down the heat on the pressure cooker. How did the college process become so stressful? I mean, middle and upper class communities, they became very focused on a small number of colleges. And parents start signaling each other that these are the colleges that are most important to get your kids into. The recommendations, pragmatic yet groundbreaking, emphasizing quality over quantity, encouraging fewer extracurricular activities, fewer AP courses, and even, in some cases, making the SAT optional. So this is the big moment. Yep. But for Chris, as he's checking for his SAT results, it's far from optional. His chances of getting in, he thinks, along with his future, hangs in the balance. Are you nervous? I mean, my hands are getting clammy. And the site's down, so... Oh, my gosh, the site crashed. <laughs> so many kids are checking them right now that the site's actually down. Do you ever try to tell him, honey, there's more to life than Harvard? I want him to go to the best school for him, but he insists that he has worked very hard. Out of his mouth, I have sacrificed so much. I have to get into the best school possible. Across town, the new recommendations could help students like Sorka McCrowan, a junior at Rye High, who won't be applying until next year. Come on, Katie. Behind that smile, a sadness, and a story that before may not have counted so heavily in the admissions process. I was 11 years old when my mom died, so I didn't really, I had to become an adult when I was still in like elementary school. 
She lost her mom, an architect and professor at Columbia, to meningitis. Her father forced to work multiple jobs to support four kids. Sorka stepping up to help care for her brother, Connor, who has autism. People didn't know how to really interact with him, but we just love him all the same. This is me, Seamus, Connor, and I. She finds comfort in photographs and memories. This is my favorite photo of my mom. There's this one. People have told me when I showed them the photo that they say I look like my mom. You do look like her. Sorka founded a meningitis awareness club, a final promise to her mother to help others. I wanted to make sure that nobody in my community had to go through what I go through. So how is meningitis diagnosed? But Weisbord argues it's not just meaningful work in school, but it's service like Sorka's provided at home in a time of need, which should count as community service. A lot of family contributions, low-income kids especially, often their contributions don't count in the college admissions process. A month later, Chris is busy putting the finishing touches on his Harvard application, adding his near-perfect SAT scores. I hope colleges will see that um, I'm not just a bunch of numbers. There's nothing left to do but wait. The entire Ivy League and more than 50 colleges have endorsed the recommendations. Though there's no surefire way to ensure enforcement, MIT is already putting them to work. We added a question. How have you improved the lives of others? So it's all happening right here. It's all happening right here, yeah. I feel the heat coming off the door <laughs> right now. And how carefully do you pour over all of the admissions? We look at every uh, everything that comes in on every application. Uh, we look at every application more than once. I was amazed at how thorough we really are. Back in New York, there's only four days to go until the Harvard decision. Your mom quoted you as saying, you sacrificed so much. I've tried my hardest to sort of do the best that I can. They tell you this is your future. That's the message he hears. It's not the decision they'd hoped for. Chris is deferred. He'll have to wait until at least March for Harvard's final decision. Yeah, it wasn't the best outcome. His disappointment, a study in understatement. Do you feel like you haven't accomplished enough for someone to accept you? But in the end, I think that it gives me an opportunity to look at a lot of other schools. Trying to keep things in perspective, some advice from his principal to help him absorb the blow. What's the 36-hour pout rule? If they are deferred or denied, we say 36 hours, you pout, you feel bad for yourself, and you're going to start working, and we're going to find another first choice. Chris is doing just that as he continues applying to 16 additional schools. There's Princeton, MIT, Yale, Cornell, UPenn, Carnegie Mellon, Johns Hopkins, Stanford, University of Michigan, University of Washington, Brown, Dartmouth, Northwestern. A dream deferred, perhaps, for Chris. But it could be different next year for Sorka. Her hours of personal sacrifice may just boost her application, which in years past may not have counted as much. Being here makes me think about my mom. As she walks the campus where her mother once taught, she hopes her application may capture the fuller picture of who she is and why it counts. I'm really excited for college, and it's like a chance to start over and excited about the future.